So I just passed my KCNA or the Kubernetes Cloud Native Associate Certificate. It has been on my list for a while now, since last year. And it's good to check off that box finally that I was able to set the exam and pass it. In this video, I'll be sharing my study plan and resources that I used. So let's get started. Now, after passing the exam, you get this cool certificate that you can you know, share, but you also get the Credly badge that you can share on LinkedIn and other social media platform. Now, let's talk about the certification itself. So for people who are not familiar with Kubernetes and Cloud Native Associate was the first associate level certifications that the Linux Foundation came out with because earlier you only had CKS, CKA. Since it is an associate level certification, let's look at who this exam is for. So if you go to the about section, you can see this exam demonstrates a user's foundational knowledge and skills in Kubernetes and the wider cloud native ecosystem. And if you look at prerequisites, the official guide says there are no prerequisites for this exam, but I'll mention a few if you're just starting out in DevOps and cloud. So I'll leave that for after. For now, let's look at what the domains are. So if you see the Kubernetes fundamentals is almost the half of the exam. So it covers 46% of the questions. Container orchestration at 22%, cloud native architecture at 16, and then you have cloud native observability and cloud native application delivery at 8% each. And you can also expand these to go deeper into what different topics are included in that specific domain. I won't go into each of them. As for the cost, the certification only costs $250, but if you want the companion course, you can get it as a bundle for $299. I just went for the just the certification itself, and for the number of questions, you get about 60 questions on the exam itself. Now I'll share what resources I used to study. I would begin by saying that the last eight to 10 days is when I was actively studying, but I have been passively studying for this certification since last year. What that means is I had the DevOps capstone project, right, which is deployed on AWS EKS and building that project and, you know, was obviously making me more experienced with Kubernetes. So I've been working with Kubernetes and containers since last year. That is why I was using the term passively. Actively means that, you know, I was going through the course, practicing hands-on, and then also doing practice tests. So that was for the last 10 days, I would say. The course for my choice was from CodeCloud, highly recommend it. Uh, I went through this entire course, skipped a few lessons where I felt like, okay, I already know these concepts, as you can see, but overall, very solid course. Now, coming to that prerequisite point I made. So if you are new to DevOps and like platform engineering itself, and you're not confident with like Linux or containers, I would say, yeah, these are the prerequisites. So make sure you know Linux, you make sure you know containerization and containers, so how Docker works, and then a little bit about Kubernetes before you start your preparation about KCNA. Now this roadmap is available on CodeCloud again. So this is the KCNA learning path and I think they have nailed it here. For me, I already am pretty familiar with the other topics, hence I did the KCNA course. Now, the other resource that I used was the Tutorial Dojo's practice exams. So this is the 2025 edition. Again, I didn't go through all of them, but there are different kind of modes you can take these practice exams in. So there is the review mode that I took, and then you also have section-based practice exams. So these are tied to the domain. I usually take those as I am going through the course itself. And also it comes with the KCNA flashcards. So I would usually go through the flashcards every other day to make sure you know I am familiar with the terms and different definitions. Now, talking about the project that I was mentioning, you know, I have an entire playlist on YouTube if you want to get hands-on with Kubernetes. And this is an end-to-end -end project. So we start from the application itself, containerize it, and then we deploy it to a managed Kubernetes service that is AWS EKS. I'll make sure to link down this playlist, uh, but this is the project itself that I built. And with that, the only other resource I would like to share is these awesome KCNA notes by Kevalia. Hopefully I'm not butchering his name, but these are amazing. You can go through these notes as you might be revising before the exam. So I did that like a day before this exam. 
and they really helped me. So shout out to you, Cavalier, and thank you for making these public. But yeah, overall, that was my strategy. The exam experience, uh, you get about 90 minutes to sit the exam. But yeah, that was my study plan and resources. As far as the exam experience, um, it was, I had some issues with the online proctoring with my laptop specifically because of uh, certain background apps that I couldn't find were still running. But other than that, the online proctoring, I took it at home and experience itself was good. You have about 90 minutes to sit the exam. I was able to complete it roughly in 60 to 65 minutes. And as for the passing score, you need 75, as you can see here but I was able to score 80. So not a lot, but you know, a pass is a pass. But yeah, if you are sitting the exam, I wish you luck and I hope this video helps you. As for my certification goals for now, I was able to check off KCNA finally. It has been sitting here in my Notion since last year. Now it's time to move to AWS Security Specialty and the GCP DevOps Professional. I hope you liked the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.